Got a review on the channel today. We're doing the Win and Win NSXP foam limbs here. And I can't wait to open them because Win and Win has packed all sorts of new things into this limb. So before I get started, huge thanks to Win and Win for sending me these limbs here. And as usual in my reviews, I give you full disclosure if somebody sent me the limbs or the products that I'm using in this video or not. And Win and Win did supply these to me for free for the purpose of a review. Now I only do that under one condition and that is that I have to be honest, period, end of story. If I find any sort of defect or flaw when somebody sends me a piece of equipment, I will first reach out to the manufacturer and make sure that it wasn't my fault, like say if I was setting it up wrong or just did it wrong in general, um, or if there's an actual concern that they need to be addressing. And if that is, I still will let you know in the video if that happened. So anyway, just full disclosure there. Now, I did also open the box because I was gonna do a YouTube short teasing them, but I decided I just really don't like doing the YouTube shorts. It's just kind of more of a pain than it is anything, and I really don't get a whole lot out of it anyhow. Before we get too far into the video, I want to make an announcement. I am doing a giveaway. Thanks to Win and Win, they sent me a swag bag here, literally a bag, uh, one of those uh, recycled plastic reusable grocery bag type things that has Wea Wiz on both sides, plus a couple of other things on the inside, some old stuff and some new stuff that they're offering now. I've got one of their hats that are both functional and ridiculous. It is a flip up hat that you can uh, shoot with the brim flipped up a large because it fit me but to be honest I have so many shirts I'm probably never gonna wear it so it's a large white we a whiz win and win shirt here I will autograph this or the hat or both depending on who wins the shirt and what their preferences are and new for this year I believe or at least I haven't seen these yet they are the we a whiz ice sleeves essentially you put them on for both sun protection as well as cooling properties there's a black set that are still in the package that I haven't opened yet and I already opened this white package and they're actually very very nice arm sleeves that I think are designed to be worn during the summertime because they're ice sleeves right they're supposed to be cooling very very stretchy material no seams on them at all and I put them on and they're extremely comfortable and I'm saving a set of each color for myself. So I'm also going to be including a set of these white and a set of the black. They say we whiz on them. Actually, they do feel a bit cooler than the actual raw temperature of my skin. So if you're interested in entering into this giveaway that I am going to do the drawing for on December 12th, all you have to do is comment below. Just comment anything. You can comment a number, you can comment comment for all I care. All you need to do is comment below and you're entered to win this stuff and I will send it to you for free anywhere in the world. Uh, I'll get in touch with you through your comment. So I will comment on your comment letting you know you won. So you need to pay attention to that. And uh, if you see me reaching out to you, please do respond or send me an email after I comment on your comment that you've won. If I don't get a reply within a week from that person, I'll just continue doing that every week from there on out until I find somebody. Just so you know, those are the rules of the giveaway. I'll send these to you. No purchase necessary. I don't know if I need to say any of this stuff, but I'll be using a uh, random selection tool that will be fair to select a random winner. All you need to do, like I said, is comment below and you'll win this swag bag of a bag, a hat, a shirt, and arm sleeves in both black and white, and I'll happily autograph any of these if you want me to do so, and I'll ship it to your door. So thanks to Win and Win for supplying some of this stuff to give away, and thanks for supplying me these limbs, like I said before, uh, so that way I can get you, the customer, a review and give you some honest feedback as to what I feel about these limbs. So inside the box is one of their hats. They're actually nice, these ones here. They're the dry fit hats that are adjustable in the back. They get, have a little bit of a stretch to them, and they're kind of very similar to what would be a golfing hat. So they're very comfortable, and I actually genuinely like shooting in them. Although they are white, and uh, I have a problem with dirty hands usually, and they turn black or brown very quickly. So also it comes with a manual, looks like some decent looking stickers actually. So the limbs are high gloss. There's many different features this year that are new for these NSXP limbs. And they are extremely, extremely sharp. Uh, very similar to the XP limbs themselves as far as the graphics are concerned. The colors are about the same. And they're painted fully on the outside edges. Uh, and it looks 
very, very good to me. They have some very cool little details here or there of things that are written on the limb that normally you don't see, like on the side here, the side profile. It shows that they're super duper extreme, of course. So the uh, limbs, as far as the finish is concerned, they look really, really sharp, high gloss. You know, we were discussing on my Discord server, which is attached to my Patreon page, and uh, some people just wish you could still see the layup on the side of the limbs, whereas this limb is painted on all sides. Because, you know, sometimes, like for myself at least, I like to see the layers because I can appreciate the the artistry of laying up laminates, for lack of better terms. Um, however, what Win and Win has done here is what they've claimed is they are heat reflective cool pigments on the actual limb itself to help reduce actual uh, you know temperature absorption, which should degrade the limb in theory as it gets hotter, should get weaker. And actually, Win and Win sent me their uh, seminar information that shows what these limbs are about and why they're better. And so as I'm going through the video, I'll put things up on the screen showing you, you know, their data that they've given me, which is excellent. I like to see data because it helps back up claims and back up what they're actually saying. So they're talking about heat resistance in the paint, and it shows in the graph that I'm putting on your screen now that shows the resistance to the actual loss of draw weight in temperatures uh, because of the coating itself. So that is what they're talking about there. And you can see here, the limbs are just very shiny. Got fingerprints on it from myself as well already. But, you know, generally I prefer a flat or a matte finish limb um, because that's just me. I just like the style of the flat matte finish. It shows a little bit less in the way of fingerprints although it shows a lot more in regards to oils. So you can see here that they are, they are sharp. Actually, they're upside down. Let me put them right side up for you. So you can see here, everything looks good. These are Korean made limbs. You can see the stuff that they have written here on the back of the limb, various different things. Uh, let's see, graphene nanotech, heat reflective cool pigments, soft epoxy film, uh, and a few other things. So the soft epoxy film is another thing. I think they could have used a little bit better word instead of soft because soft is not something you want in a limb. You don't want something that's giving. I believe, if I may translate for them, soft being that reduces actual vibration. And that's why the little logo here next to where it says soft has a little vibration thing. So it's showing basically on the actual slide that they sent me that the soft epoxy film, like I said, I wish they would have named that something different, like vibration dampening film or something like that. Uh, basically, it reduces vibration. And then they also publish the data and show you the actual, you know, vibration analysis data to show you how it reduces it and how quickly it reduces it. So again, data. I love data. Another thing that is supposed to be new in these limbs is the actual core itself. The core material is some sort of heat resistant foam core and they show a picture of the foam core in 60 degrees Celsius and you can see how on the left that one's nice and straight as and stiff as a board and the one on the right has degraded and has essentially become floppy which coincides with that heat resistant coating the painting the paint that I've already talked about shows that huge difference in the drop of the or the lessening of the drop of the draw weight which is cool so I like to see again data and then they actually sent me some high speed footage and some uh some tracking analysis of the string like the knock itself from a view overhead, straight down, you'll see that this string is moving back and forth after the arrow goes. And what they're comparing there is the NSG limbs that are foam to the NSXP wood and NSXP foam. And it actually shows the foam doing the best of the three, which is really cool to see. Yes, the arrow is long gone by that point, right? But what I can tell you from experience of shooting win and win stuff ever since they came out with that kind of analysis and showed that to the world. Uh, it started a long time ago, actually, when I was still shooting for Hoyt. And it basically showed like how good the string tracking is after the arrow is gone. And yes, again, it's after the arrow is gone, but what it really shows 
is how the bow feels. When the bow is shot, and if the string is traveling in a straight line and not wobbling all over the place and making circles, it actually makes the bow feel a lot more refined and crisp, and the bow jumps and launches forward hard and doesn't wobble and shake all over the place as much as some older limbs do. The newer limbs are much, much better from just about every manufacturer, but I think Win & Win is still at the top in regards to that. So they have a lot of different features, like I said, packed into this limb, and the curves are fairly standard. Let me grab a set of uh, the MXT XPs and lay them on top, and then I'll actually grab an MX MXT 10 set as well, and we'll compare the curves. All right, so first let's compare the MXT XP to the NSXP as far as the curvature is concerned. What the curvature does is it really affects the way the limbs feel as you're drawing them back. And it shows to me that they're essentially the same exact curve itself between the MXT XP and the NSXP. So the way they should feel through the clicker zone should be about the same. And actually, now that I'm holding them side by side, I can see a difference in the limb that I thought was there that I forgot to mention, and that was in the limb tips themselves. So if you see the XP, the MXT XP is on the left here, that side, um, they're longer. You'll see that they're much, much longer and they're much, much bigger. So the MXT XP is on that side there. You'll see that the NS are much shorter and stubbier and not as pointy. The actual groove themselves appears to be very, very similar, but they're reducing a bit of mass weight out there. And I don't think it's because they made the limb themselves actually longer, actually. They definitely are longer. So this is going to really change the way the limb feels and reacts. So when I line up the butt of the limbs and then compare where the string grooves are, you'll see the NSXPs right here are actually much longer. Let me do that again so I can show you from this perspective. You can see how much longer the XP, the NSXPs are compared to the MXT. XP limbs. Dramatically longer, like a long difference, a very big difference. Like three eighths of an inch on this one limb. So we're going to see, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to brace height change. And I'll restring this riser here, this ATFDX, with the MXT XP limbs on them. Check the brace height and then without twisting or untwisting the strings, put these limbs on and see what the change is. They're both long, 42s, so they should be the same, relatively speaking, in regards to what the brace height is saying, uh, just in regards to the actual length itself. Now, when I grab the MXT-10 limbs and compare really quick, I'm going to see the length difference if there is any. This is hard to do because the curvature is so different, so I'm not going to be able to compare that the same because if you look <clears throat> towards you is the MXT-10 limb, and uh, that's with the tip more towards the, the butt of the limb, so it has a more extreme curve compared to the NSXP limb. So the MXT-10 limb, in my experience, was very, very smooth through the clicker. As you get more towards the, that really, really recurved limb, it tends to feel a lot more um, smooth, quote-unquote, through the clicker zone. It doesn't snap, stack as much, more like an UCA-style limb. Whereas the limbs that are not so recurved tend to feel a little bit more linear through the curvatures of the actual draw force curve. So that means that the MXT XP limbs, excuse me, the NS XP limbs and the MXT XP limbs should stack a little bit more through the clicker zone. Now that brings me to something that I've been wanting to address really quick on the channel is the draw force curves. I don't have a good solution here yet keyword is yet. Thomas is working on a setup for me that's going to really, really up the level of the consistency of the draw force curves on a machine that does a much better job of pulling the bow back in the exact same way every single time, unlike my last chance archery uh, draw board. The bow press and the draw board are great, but they are definitely not designed for high precision measurements, right? And so Thomas is working on a solution that I'm going to be able to redo all my draw force curves, 
get you new draw force curves, and then we'll be able to have a lot better uh, data in regards to comparing and contrasting efficiency ratings. Because in the past, many people have said, oh, the whatever set of limbs are dramatically more efficient than the other set of limbs that you reviewed months ago, what the heck's the difference? The problem is in my setup. So full disclosure, I don't have the best, latest, greatest, super awesome gear yet that I can actually have um, really strong benchmarks, which I will deliver here very shortly in the future. So that way um, you'll be able to see the draw force curves in a way that is very interactive and uh, very intuitive to be able to see in uh, what's applicable to you. So just bear with me just a little bit. Uh, that is coming and it'll happen when it happens. Development of many different products takes a considerable amount of time. And I, I didn't even realize how much goes into developing new products. So I apologize for teasing a few different things out there that have made some people excited. Please just have some patience and there will be a lot of stuff that'll come out that I hope uh, makes a big difference in the industry and helps you, the consumer, make a much better decision as far as buying which products you like or which products you believe are the best. So thanks for that patience and I appreciate everybody's excitement. Trust me, I'm very excited. I'm the most excited person if um, I do say so myself because I get to put my hands on all of these different things and get the data that I've been craving for decades now. <clears throat> I feel like these limbs are very, very, very torsionally stable. The NS compared to the MXT-10s, the MXT-10s are nowhere near as stiff as the, uh, the NS ones. And the MXT-XPs are very, very similar to the NS limbs. Maybe the NS limbs are a little bit more stable, just feeling. I'll do an updated video here shortly with some of the new limbs that I've had in my possession to measure the, uh, the deflection torsionally when I hang a weight from the limb tip, just like I did before. And I will be sure to host that PDF or that data on my website so that way people can access it easily. And as far as flaws on the limbs, I don't see a single drip I don't see any sort of coating failure. Okay, here's a little bit of an issue, a tiny amount. Decal issue probably. On this side of the, let's see, the lower limb. See where it says wheel is, where it rolls over the corner. See how it, through this area where it should be black in between the M and the S and all that stuff, there is a white line. So that's the only failure, and you can see in the S here, there's a black that goes partially into the S. So that really, that's the only thing I'm seeing on the limb, and you can see it there on the WIA, WIA, through there as well. I'm gonna check the fitment of the limbs and the riser really quick. Although I already have the Kaminsky Archery Precision Tiller Bolts in here of 375, so they are the correct size tiller bolts that are for this uh, ATF DX riser that should fit these limbs ideally, because I haven't seen very many win and win limbs that are oversized and oh yeah, it's nice and snug. That isn't gonna come out. I'm that confident in the fitment because you can see it's very, very, very stiff in the fitment. So they're tight. So these will definitely take a little bit of wear going in and out, breaking some of that clear coat off to make them fit a little bit easier. But I'd rather have a nice tight fit like this because I know how critical and how important that can be to accuracy and consistency downrange. So if you're interested in precision tiller bolts, not just for win and wins, but for Hoyts and also a few other risers, these do fit some of the SF risers as well because they're the same uh, bolt pattern and measurement, meaning the win and win ones. I have it all laid out on my website, jkaminsky.com. I'll have links in the description below the card at the top up there. Also, if you're interested in any of this equipment, by the way, I will have links in the description below showing you where you can get them at Lancaster Archery Supply uh, in case you're interested. So yeah, these are tight fitting. The lower one was nice and nice and snug. The upper one is also the same, very, very snug. So Win and Win is still doing a great job in regards to maintaining their tolerances on their limbs. So before I get too much further, I do want to compare and contrast what is happening with the differences in the actual uh, limb tips length because it seems to be very different. So I wanna put these MXT XP limbs back on, get it strung up and check the brace height. So measuring the brace height from the string to the plunger tip, I'm at 
8 and 13 sixteenths, which is just about exactly 22 and a half centimeters, 22, 22.4 and a half centimeters, give or take there. So without changing any of the twists on the strings, without changing the tiller bolt positions, let's put the NS limbs in. Upper first. Get those in place. And you'll see it takes a you know considerable amount of force to get them to snap in because of the fitment of the actual fork of the limb on the limb bolt, which is really, really important. Feels much higher as assumed. Yep, it is. So right at exactly nine inches, which is 29, 22.9 centimeters. So it did grow from the change of the limbs. There's many different factors in regards to changing limbs, especially when they're different builds themselves. But when a limb is marked 42 pounds, it can be anywhere from 41 to 43 generally. So if those limbs were 43 and these limbs were 41, that could explain part of the actual brace height growing because also as a limb is strung like this, there's a given amount of force that the limb wants to return to rest that isn't necessarily related to draw weight. A lot of it has to do with the curvature, but the curvatures are the same. But to see a, um, you know, a brace height grow a considerable amount by three sixteenths of an inch or about four millimeters, four and a half millimeters ish, give or take. That's a lot. That's a considerable amount. So I do believe that the limb tips are further out and uh, that will definitely change the feel of the limb. I know Hoyts typically tend to run theirs further out as well. It makes the limb draw a little bit more smoothly for whatever it's worth. Now, I don't know how they'd feel compared to these. I haven't shot these ones in a little while, but um, they feel pretty good. They definitely are a little spongier down here, and then they build a considerable amount um, towards full draw. So I know that the old NS limbs, compared to a lot of the more newer uh, win and win limbs, typically tended to stack more through the clicker. So I'm not sure if these NS limbs would also do the same, but we'll find out. So now what I'll do is I'll get them all lined up get the limbs aligned to the riser, get my center shot set, get the bow set up so I can get out there, get it tuned, and then afterwards, in the next video after this video, I'll shoot it for score at 70 meters and we'll see how it does. So I'm using a known straight stabilizer and I'm gonna use these biter blocks here to get my bow aligned. All right, so if I don't look at the stabilizer and I just look at the biter blocks, this is very, very, very close from the factory, down the center of the grip and everything. But I really like to use a stabilizer and I got to bump them both. Pretty normal. Every bow that I've ever had has always needed to be adjusted. Okay, now I'll set my center shot. Uh, really quick, if you are interested in learning how I tune and set up my Olympic style recurves and my bare bows, or at least most of the principles, I'm going to recommend this book here. It's called Tuning for Performance. It's a book I wrote about how to tune and set up your Olympic style recurve just like I do. It covers all sorts of different things uh, from doing what I'm doing here, taking it out of the box, setting it up preliminarily, going outside and tuning it, and then eventually fine tuning it and getting things ready for the world's biggest stage, the Olympic Games. So if you're interested in this, I will also have links in the description below to my website. So I plan on shooting these 450s because then I can get away with a little bit less draw weight so I don't have to use something so high like the 410s. Now, I already had this bow aligned and tuned and set up this riser. Uh, so with the center shot set again, I mean, with the uh, limb alignment set correctly, the center shot is dead on, so I don't have to move it at all. It's just a tiny bit to the outside because of the barrel of the X10. I wonder what the tiller is though. Forgot to check that. Seven and a half. Perfect. Seven and five sixteenths. So I'm at three sixteenths shorter on the bottom, exactly where I like it. So when and when is you know, something that I've noticed over the years and definitely seems to hold true with these limbs 
is they're super consistent in regards to how much they tiller their bows or tiller their limbs. I can swap a bunch of different sets of limbs and the tiller is all going to be about the same, or at least they have been in the past. So I'm going to throw these stabilizers on, get them all dialed in. And then next we're going to head outside, get this bow tuned at 30 meters. And I'll give you a bit of feedback as to how the bow feels, um, at least a first impression. And then, like I said, the next video is going to be me scoring at 70 meters. So if you haven't yet, please do hit that subscription button down below and the notification bell. So you're notified when I upload that new video as well as the torsional rigidity test and a few other videos that I have planned very, very soon. Okay, we're out here. I'm at 30 meters. And uh, before I shoot, I wanna make sure my brace height is set to where I like it to be. I like to run mine right around eight and, eight and seven eighths. It was a bit high at nine inches as we last saw indoors. So let me get that set first before I shoot some arrows here. I'm gonna shoot a few arrows here, kind of get sighted in and warmed up and then we'll start to work on tuning. Feels pretty good. It definitely, let me shoot a couple more. Definitely is a little stiff through the clicker, but it's super stable. As far as that full draw, the bow just feels really good. It doesn't want to move a whole lot. I do believe uh, I need to add one ounce on my long rod. I reconfigured my stabilizer system um, with the GMX3 series, so things are a little bit off and I forgot where it was, so I got to put it back. Uh, but the bow is jumping so hard it launches out of my hand and hits the end of my finger sling uh, range exactly how i really like it i love a bow that jumps out of the hand and really puts direction on that arrow um, when when i let go yeah i mean this thing just it's like a rocket out of the hand as far as sound quality it's, uh, I can tell that these are fairly torsionally rigid. It just has that sound to it. I know what they sound like or tend to sound like. There's a little bit more of a residual hum after the shot. I don't have limb savers on the bow, uh, so despite that, it's still considerably quiet. Yeah, I mean, it just jumps so hard. Sorry, the grip sliding around on me because I didn't do a good job tightening it down. But uh, it just jumps real hard, nice and stable. I do need an ounce on my long rod for sure though. Didn't shoot that one the greatest. And the bow told me it, it gave me a little bit of a different sound to it. So it's given me some feedback already. That noise is the grip so don't pay attention to that one looks like it went a little bit on the stiff side so first i'm going to go get my allen wrenches and a couple of ounces just in case and then i'll pull my arrows and continue going about this uh, to get the bow dialed in and tuned like i said right away i can tell it jumps really really hard and it feels very stable when at full draw i wouldn't say it's stacking a lot uh, but it is definitely a bit firmer against that back wall um, but I think an ounce or two on this long rod is really going to change that and give me a bit more um, confidence that the bow is going to stay still as I go to pull through the clicker um, to really stay aggressive on it and so that stability that I feel I think is going to be a very good thing and it won't feel so much as a wall when the bow is not wanting to rise and float on me so all right, so I tightened the grip and the bear shaft was sitting about five or so inches on the uh, stiff side. So I am going to take the draw weight up probably a full turn should get me real close. 
I haven't used the <laughs> precision tiller bolts all that much to make adjustments, uh, but I'll tell you, having these numbers to tell me where uh, I'm supposed to turn to for exactly one turn is very, very convenient. I shouldn't have changed my tiller one bit because of that. If you make a large adjustment in your draw weight, always check your brace height, because mine just shrunk almost an eighth of an inch from one turn. All right, still good. Three sixteenths. Very different sound compared to normal wind and wind limbs, I think. It's not, um, it's not standard of the wind and wind sound in my experience. Maybe that's the epoxy film dampening. Um, Cause it's definitely not as, um, there's a lot less high frequency vibration and maybe that's what it kills. But it is, uh, it's definitely not as crisp sounding, in my opinion. It doesn't feel bad, it just doesn't sound as crisp. Yeah, it's just got a different sound. I think limb savers would totally change that. I didn't see where that one went, so I'll have to go down there and check it. Wasn't the greatest shot, but it should get me close. All right. So they went a little weak on that one, or the bear shaft did. It went a little weak. Because that bear shaft shot wasn't the greatest, I'm going to do this again. See where it goes. Yeah, I just, I'm not super thrilled about the sound of these. It's very different. This string is ancient, so maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know. Maybe I need to play around with brace height, but I'm not a fan of the way it sounds. Like normally when they have this kind of tone, they tend to have low frequency, high amplitude vibration, but this doesn't have that. So it's weird. It's throwing me off because it sounds like it should feel different because it feels good. It feels really, really good, but the sound is not matching the feel. It may be the brace height, maybe it's just that uh, epoxy film in there that's soft. Not a good one either. I'm gonna go get that bear shaft dude again. Okay, I'm gonna go down and get it and see where it went. It looked like it went in the group. I tend to like my arrows a little bit on the weak side for 70 meters anyway. I'm gonna go down and get it and check. I'm just not happy with the way this sounds and I think that I'm gonna play around with the brace height and see what happens. I'm gonna lower it first and see if it makes it better because I just, the bow doesn't sound very happy to me. I wanna see if I can make it be any better for me. I'm gonna take four twists out, see what that gets me. That's better. That sounds more like a win and win limb to me. Yeah, that's way better. So, I don't know if it's just these limbs or what, but I had to take four twists out to get it to sound much better, at least how do I, how I really like it, commonly like it. 
and how winning wins normally sound. Yeah, just night and day difference. So for whatever it's worth, if you get these limbs, you may need to run a slightly lower brace height to get the, the feel back the way you like it. Maybe it's the limb tip length or the build change of the limb. I don't, I don't know which, but now the sound matches the feel. What you doing, Hoosh? Hmm? Good boy. Good boy. Definitely, if you like a bit more of a stable bow at full draw, when you go to pull through the clicker, which, you know, the Koreans call it stable, which translates to more other people as stacking, these limbs are definitely for you. If you've got longer draw length, maybe you may not like these, um, because it definitely feels like it could be stacking later on, a little bit more past my... 29 inch draw length. Like I said before, hopefully Thomas will have something ready so that way I can get these draw force curves out there of the limbs that I do have. So that way people can understand more as to what the data would show and then you can extrapolate the way it feels because for sure, one to one, I can feel what the data shows. I just have to have a solution that is benchmarked so it's all the same for everything. So that way it's repeatable and there's no way for the data to be skewed or tainted or just irrelevant. I want everything to be relevant to each other, so it'll just take a little bit of time. There, yeah, right in the group, slightly weak, I believe. I'll double check after I uh, go down and get them. But for sure, these limbs liked a lower brace height. Four turns out, the way I normally measure brace height with my Easton Bow Square snapped on the string all the way, I'm down just under eight and three quarter. I'm at eight and 11 sixteenths, which is 22.2 centimeters. However, this bow square doesn't measure correctly. It actually measures from this surface, the scale that's on it. And I really dislike that because of this, because I'm always second guessing what my actual brace height is. So when I hold it against a string like this and then measure, I'm right at eight and 15 sixteenths, which is 22.55 centimeters, which is exactly where I know I like stuff. So maybe I've just been running brace heights a little bit too high um, because this scale is just off. I wish Easton would fix this. Um, they had the problem, knew that it was a problem, and never addressed it, probably because they ordered a boatload of them. Um, and they're just all off. So I need a bow square that is actually correct uh, relative to the surface that is snapped to the string. So um, if anybody has one out there that knows that it is correct from the surface that touches the string when it snapped on all the way to the actual scale, let me know because I'm going to I'm going to buy that one because I really need a bow square that I know is accurate. So, um, anyway, these MXT XP limbs, or <laughs> NSXP limbs, they got so many limbs out these days from every company and everybody's got similar letters they're using these days. So it's just funny. These limbs I think are very interesting when it comes to the new stuff that's in them. The heat reflective coating, the heat resistant foam core, the vibration reducing uh, epoxy that they layer thing that they put in there. Uh, they've changed the limb tips, made them shorter and up further on the limbs. I believe they're very torsionally rigid. I'm gonna put them to the test here actually very shortly. Uh, I'm gonna go get some lunch first, shoot 70 meters and then do that test next. Uh, but the limbs themselves, they feel very good. The bow absolutely launches out of my hand. Uh, the uh, GMX 3 Series and the Axias just didn't jump. It's just 
Didn't, didn't come out of the hand how I like. I really like a bow that's aggressive and pops out of my hand because then I can feel that I am or I'm not putting the direction on the arrow correctly when I'm pushing into the target. So I really, really like that the bow jumps. It did give me feedback uh, audibly already when I made bad shots. I could hear it changing, although the grip was loose, so maybe that was it. We'll find out as I shoot more arrows at 70 meters for score because that really starts to highlight what the bow does and doesn't do because I can be much more critical and shoot a lot more arrows back there, of course. So it tuned fine, aligned fine. Everything went together very well. The limb fork was maybe a little tighter than it should be because it's really hard to put the limb in and it's gonna be really hard to get these limbs out. Although I'd rather have it tighter than looser. And you can always, if you had to, take some uh, sandpaper or an emery file and just barely touch the clear coat but you gotta make sure you do it evenly on both sides as best as you can. Wouldn't necessarily advise that. I would just snap them on and off a set of limb bolts, uh, you know, a, a decent amount of times to make them fit correctly. But like I said, in order to maintain alignment, as you st uh, string your bow and unstring your bow, change your limb positions and tiller positions, things like that, you really need a nice, snug, tight fit. So I'd rather have this. Uh, there's a lot going on in this video. We got a giveaway, remember. All you need to do is comment below to make sure you get entered into the giveaway. I'll be doing the drawing on December 12th of 2023. So as long as you comment below, that's all you need to do to enter. And please do pay attention to a reply to your comment. Because if I do comment on December 12th, sometime in the morning, uh, we'll say 9 a.m. Eastern time in the United States, I'll select the winner and I'll post and comment on their comment. So if you see me say, hey, you're the winner, please email me as I give you an email instruction so that way I can get your shipping details. So that's all you need to do to enter. Thanks again to Win and Win for sending me these limbs. They are gorgeous, they look great. There's just that one little bit of issue in the logo on this limb right through here. Other than that, visually, I see not a single flaw in the limb besides that. Uh, the sound, now that I lowered my brace height back down to potentially where it normally is, it sounds much better, so pay attention to that. You will definitely need a slightly longer string if you're extremely particular about the amount of twists in your string. Mine was within range, so it was fine. I didn't you know, feel the need to pull out a different shorter string, or longer string, rather. Again, the bow jumped hard with these limbs. Um, I felt nothing to note of vibration, just felt good. And they were definitely very stable when at full draw. So if you're interested in feeling a set of limbs that are a little bit stiffer through that clicker zone to potentially give you a little bit more stability, a little bit more confidence when you go to pull through the clicker, these ones might be for you. Again, if you're interested in them, links in the description below. And thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider sharing it, hitting that notification bell down below. Genuinely, those things help grow this channel. I don't operate any other social media and I rely on you to share these videos to help get the word out there. Also, if you wouldn't mind, consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below, including affiliate links, there's apparel sales, there's also my website that you can check out some things that I have available for sale, book some coaching, whatever you're interested in. There's many different ways to support this channel. I can't thank my supporters enough. Without you, I wouldn't be able to produce this content, at least not to this level. So thank you for that.